It's clear that House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has made a whole lot of promises in his quest to become Speaker, including to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, who is now whipping votes for him. You'll remember that Greene was stripped of her two committee seats last year after it came to light she had endorsed violence against Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. You see, back in 2019, Greene had liked a Facebook comment that suggested, quote, a bullet to the head would be quicker to remove Pelosi. She also trafficked in insane far-right lies, including uh, a, a particularly an anti-Semitic one uh, that, get this, the California wildfires were a false flag started by a space laser on behalf of the Rothschilds and then Governor Jerry Brown. So, of course, the far-right extremists in the House are now scheming for revenge, and Kevin McCarthy is pledging to give it to them by removing, tit for tat, as he views it, Democratic, three Democratic House members from their committees. Eric Swalwell cannot get a security clearance in the public sector. Why would we ever give him a security clearance in the secrets to America? So I will not allow him to be on intel. You have Adam Schiff, who had lied to the American public time and again. We will not allow him to be on the Intel Committee either. And you look, Congresswoman Omar, her anti-Semitic comments that have gone forward. We're not going to allow her to be on foreign affairs. Joining me now, one of those people, Congressman Adam Schiff, Democrat of California, who's the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, a member of the January 6th Committee. Um, chairman, you're accused of lying time and time again to the American people, which is apparently disqualifying disqualifying for um, being on a committee, which I'm not sure about that. I've covered a lot of politicians, and <laughs> I don't think that dings you, but I would like to get your response. Well, by lying, uh, what Kevin McCarthy is referring to is telling the truth about Donald Trump uh, and holding to him to account, uh, impeaching him, leading that trial, uh, being a member of the January 6th committee. Uh, but look, uh, the, you know, notwithstanding the bogus rationalization, uh, this is about satisfying the lowest elements of his conference, the Marjorie Taylor Greens who want payback, the Gosars, uh, the Matt Gateses, And this is what it's going to be uh, over the next two years, which is Kevin McCarthy can't become speaker without the QAnon caucus uh, in his conference. Uh, he will do what Marjorie Taylor Greene tells him to do. And this is just the beginning. Uh, and it's a, it's a tragedy for the American people. I mean, you know, whether I stay as chair of Intel or I don't, um, is not the tragedy. The tragedy is there are some serious things we need to deal with as a country. Uh, and in addition to these sort of petty attacks on people who have held Trump accountable, uh, they're threatening default on the nation's credit. They're threatening government shutdowns if we don't uh, cut Social Security and Medicare. They want to investigate Anthony Fauci. I mean, it's absurd, uh, but we're going to see that uh, if the Republican conference is uh, in the same asylum, and it looks a lot like one, the lunatics are taking over. You have this to say. You said last week voters rejected extremist Republicans at the ballot box. Yet despite that clear repudiation, Republicans are plowing full steam ahead with their conspiracy theory agenda, a political sideshow for the QAnon base. They are so dangerously out of touch. I want to I want to ask about what what this what this means for governing. Um, there are things the House has to do to keep the government running, right? Raising the debt ceiling, which you mentioned, which they're already. Uh, saying, but also passing appropriations bills on a timely matter to keep the... Are you confident that McCarthy can wield this narrow majority to deliver at that threshold level? Or are those going to be tough, big, you know, catastrophes? Uh, no, I, I'm not at all confident that he can do even the bare minimum of the job. Um, you know, it's one thing uh, if you have a large majority and you can sort of say, well, I can afford to ignore the, the crazies like Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's another if you have just a handful uh, that are keeping you in the speaker's chair, and they're crazy, uh, and you have to go along with crazy in order to, to do that, to keep that job. Uh, and if crazy wants you to shut down the government, then you have to shut down the government. It's why uh, John Boehner walked away from the job. It's why Paul Ryan uh, left the job. And, uh, and, you know, Kevin McCarthy is nothing if not morally flexible, malleable. Um, and, you know, he will do whatever he's told to do by Trump and by these extreme elements of this conference. But that that will get in the way of just basic governance. Yeah. Uh, and and, you know, the American people want their government to work. And and I just don't see their ability to even govern their own, let alone govern the chamber. 
Um, I want to ask about uh, uh, the January 6th committee and, and, and that speeding towards its conclusion. Um, one of the big outstanding questions, of course, is about testimony from two individuals, uh, Vice President, then Vice President Mike Pence, and the former President Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been subpoenaed, and he is challenging that subpoena. Mike Pence, who was invited and was in negotiations, as far as I understand it, um, just came out with a book. Uh, he's trying to sell that book everywhere that he can go and basically is saying, if you want my testimony, you got to pay the 25 bucks for it. But the committee doesn't get it. Here's here's how he described his decision that you don't get to talk to him. Take a listen. I never stood in the way of senior members of my team cooperating with the committee and testifying. Um, but Congress has no right to my testimony. You're closing the door on that entirely. Um, I'm closing the door on that. Why, why do you think he's wrong when he says Congress has no right to his testimony? Because it's, you know, at, at its base, most basic, it's not about what Congress has a right to. Indeed, we do have a right to his testimony. It's what is his responsibility to the public and to the country? Uh, former presidents have come and testified before Congress. Certainly a former vice president can. Uh, but as you say, no, it's more important for him to sell his book. Uh, it's really basically following the John Bolton model. I can't come in to testify before Congress for some uh, fictitious reason, but I can put it all in a book and, and make money from it. Um, you know, look, we have to uh, view everything Mike Pence says and does right now through the prism of two things. He wants to run for president. He doesn't want to alienate the Trump base any more than he has to. And this is his way of, of walking that line. But it, it really is a disservice to the country uh, and for him to uh, parade this as some kind of a sanctimonious decision that uh, they have no right to my testimony doesn't, of course, answer the question, does he have a responsibility to the country? Certainly, if he wanted to testify, he could, uh, and he is withholding that uh, from the American people. Yeah, and to the extent there's any privilege, that's been punctured by the fact he wrote a book about it. Um, he does seem to be planning a 2024 run on the platform of, with the exception of the whole hanging Mike Pence bit, uh, I'm with Trump all the way. Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you very much.